Hi, welcome to Happy Tales. I'm Cheryl Rosenthal from the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. I am their Communications and Education Coordinator. And I'm Joni Geiger, the Executive Director. And today our show is going to be about litter box issues with cats. I know, Joni, in an earlier show we talked about litter boxes and uh, the importance of keeping them clean and some different um, litters to use and different litter boxes, the do's and don'ts. But today I think we need to talk about the issues of when your cat starts avoiding uh, the litter box. What can you do to correct that? Sure. Um, you know, Cheryl, we get a lot of cats in the shelter and a lot of cats are surrendered and truthfully um, there are a number of cats that are surrendered because they're having litter box issues and very often in those histories that we take from people it's, it's pretty apparent or it's pretty obvious that had the person had the right tools they could have corrected the issue in the home. Right. A lot of times it isn't uh, the cat that has the litter box issue um, it's a people problem. We're right. not meeting the cat's needs. Right. Um, I think a lot of times people think, well, cats, when they're born, they automatically dig around in loose soil or sand and they bury their waste. Um, and so they think, well, gee, my cat's automatically litter box trained. That's not true. No. Um, there is some training and some reinforcement that has to happen. And, you know, when you have a dog, you praise your dog when your dog does something good. Uh, a lot of times with cats, when our cat is using the litter box, we forget to say thank you, you bet. and reward them for that. Uh, and then when they stop using their litter box, mm. we get angry and we try mm. punishment. Yeah. And, and that can be another deterrent. So I think it's very important for people to understand that the cat is relying on us to, to provide them with their bathroom. And we need to make that bathroom as inviting to them as possible. Right. It's their bathroom. Um, I don't know about you, but I like certain fragrances in my bathroom. Cats don't like fragrance, and so you need to remember that when you're planning. Location is important, so there's a lot of different things that play well, into let's, your kitty's bathroom. Let's talk bathroom. about that, Cheryl. You know, uh, let's say that you know you were working with a person who is getting a cat and they're preparing for their cat. Okay. What really would be ideal for that kitty in in the bathroom <laughs> area? What What do you want to do? Okay. First of all, you want to know how many other cats are in the home. Okay. And the best rule of thumb for litter boxes is one litter box per cat plus okay. one. So if you have one cat, you still should have two litter boxes. Right. Cats a lot of times like to urinate in one and defecate in another. Absolutely. Or they just like to have one for emergencies. It's like, oh, gee, I used that box this morning. I'd like a clean one this afternoon. Sure. So one litter box per cat plus one. Mm -hmm. Location is very important. You don't want it to be in a real busy, hectic area of the house, like I certainly wouldn't put it in a hallway. Bathroom, a lot of people put them in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. At our house, we only have one bathroom, so that room is very busy, a mm -hmm. lot of ins and outs, and that's not a good place. That doesn't give your cat any privacy. Um, but you also don't want it so secluded that it doesn't feel like part of the cat's territory right. or cleverly hidden under the basement steps where it's dark and icky and the cat doesn't want to go. You know, and I, I work with people all the, uh, you know, frequently about this and it's like, you know, and understandably so, people don't want a litter box in the middle of their living room. Right. And, and you know, we're, that's not our expectation nor the cat's expectation. Right. But ideally, give me an example, like where would litter boxes uh, ideally should go? Well, if you have a spare room, mm -hmm. If you have a uh, basement, mm -hmm. um, you, you need to put them, you know, um, in an area that maybe a workshop, mm -hmm. um, maybe in a large bathroom, maybe a secondary bathroom, not on your main every bathroom. Floor, One um, on every floor is ideal. You really should have a litter box on every floor. And the reason for that is? Cats are territorial and they may not want to make the hike upstairs okay. or um, cats may uh, want to use one part of the house, they may see that it more as their territory. Another cat may see, you know, another floor as, as territory. Okay. Or they'll see one floor, this is our bathroom area, the rest of the house is our sleeping area. Now I've had people too that I've worked with in the past that say, well I have three boxes, but they're all lined up together. Okay. What, what well, might, why might that be an issue? <laughs> Let's pretend you and I are cats. Okay. And there's three litter boxes in a row. Okay. And I need to use the litter box. Right. And I get in the litter box, and you're like, oh, wow, I wonder what she's doing in there. I'm going to go check it out. And I'm like, oh, I'd like a little privacy. So I move to the next box. You're still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So cats see one 
litter boxes all in a row, they don't see that as three separate litter boxes. That's one litter box. Okay. And sometimes, Joni, as simple as taking one of those litter boxes, put one on one wall and one on an opposite wall, putting some space between. Sure. Be, and that's true even if you have one cat. Put some space between those litter boxes so it's like a different area that the cat is going to. The other thing, cats are their most vulnerable when they're eating, sleeping, urinating, and defecating. And even though cats are domesticated, there's still that vulnerability that they feel when they're using their box. Sure. And they like to see, is anybody sneaking up on me? Can I see down the hall or can I see anybody approaching me? I had a client where they had a litter box in the bathroom and it was as simple as moving it from the side of the bathtub to underneath the sink into another area so that the cat could see out the door sure. Sure. so it didn't feel cornered. Uh, they need an escape route. And that's another reason why I don't encourage covered litter boxes. Um, there's only one way out and one way in. And if you have kittens or younger cats, sometimes they like to play that game where I'm going to ambush you when you come out of the litter box. <laughs> and you have that happen once or twice with an older cat. That's enough for that cat to say, yeah. I ain't doing this anymore. Yeah. I'm going to go. Or you have a dog that, that you know, yeah, the cat's things. in the box and the, and oh, yeah. the dog approaches and goes right what in there doing? and gets his head. Yeah. So. And then the cat goes, whoa, I'm never going in that box yeah. again, and finds a, a nice area in a different so part of the house. So we're talking some aversion to that litter box. Right. Okay. Right. Now, so, so just kind of a wrap up quickly, because we want to get into some of the um, issues that people mm -hmm. have and how they can correct them. But a new person, or, or I should say a, a person getting a new, new cat, cat, and they're bringing it home for the first time. So one more box than they have cats. Right. One box on every floor. Right. Um, and scooping once or twice a day. Okay. Uh, scooping is to a cat what flushing is to you and I. Right. So once is good, twice is A plus. Yeah. Uh, discourage the use of liners. Most cats don't like how they feel on their feet. No covered boxes because it's confinement. If you're using a covered box to keep the odor away, your box isn't clean enough. If you don't like the smell of the litter box, I can guarantee you, your cat doesn't like the smell of your box either. Uh, so cats, cats smell better than we do. A hundred times better than us. And so um, I always tell people if, if you don't, you know, we all have a toilet in our house. Mm -hmm. And people know you have a toilet in your house. <laughs> but they shouldn't smell the toilet in your house. And the same is true with a litter box. Yeah. People know that you have cats. People come to my house, they know I have cats. But they shouldn't walk in my house and go, oh, she's she got cats. cats. Yeah. Uh, so you want it to be, you know, oh, they have a litter box. Wow, is that ever nice and clean? Mm -hmm. um, so put yourself in the cat's place. Is that something that you would step into with your bare feet, knowing that later you'd have to lick it off your feet? So cleanliness is really important. Well, I, then, I compare it to people flushing a toilet, just right. like you say. I mean, if you're in a public restaurant and there's two stalls and mm -hmm. someone had flushed the toilet, previous to the use and someone hadn't, which one are you going to use? Yeah, right. It's that right. simple. Right. And then keeping it, and then once a month, you know, take that gently used litter and pour it into an ice cream pail and wash that litter box with gently, uh, you know, with warm soapy water. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be, don't use ammonia, don't use bleach, don't use any harsh chemicals. Um, and then pay attention. And then sometimes people will tell me, oh, I scoop and right away my cat's in the box getting it dirty again. That's what you want. So what you want to do is you want to hang there for a minute or two and re-scoop the box because that reinforces good, yeah, good kitty. kitty. That's what you want. You want to use an unscented litter and quit. Don't change litters. A lot of times, people, oh well, I buy what what's ever on sale, um, and that's not a good idea. Find something that your kitty likes and stick with it. What you spend in litter, if you use a litter consistently that your cats like and you use boxes that they like and locations that they like, that is a lot less expensive than cleaning up carpeting and mm -hmm. furniture and bedding. Mm -hmm. And so being consistent in those things, that is the most important thing to a cat is their bathroom. And we need to recognize that um, that that's meeting one of their needs. That's sure. as important to a cat as uh, food and water. Yeah, I so, totally I totally agree. So yeah. let's uh, let's take a break, and okay. we're going to get some litter boxes, and we're going to talk about some actual issues and what people can do to solve those issues. Okay, sounds good.